All I really care about at the end of the day is who is out there that is self-conscious of their smile, that wants to do something and doesn't have a dentist they trust. And so when you put it out there and you make it easy and you gather these people, now I see people come into the platform and I get a photo of what they look like. I know their emotional pain point of why they want to change their smile. So it's every marketer's dream. You have now within the platform all that information. And now you as a dentist, you get to sit down when you have time and you get to just give them your best self. Hey there, dental economist. If you're a dentist owner or a leader within a dental business thinking about growing production, case acceptance, patient and staff satisfaction, positive outcomes, and everything else that comes with running a dental business, then you're a dental economist and you've come to the right place. Welcome to the Dental Economist Show. We're meeting at the intersection of profit and purpose as I sit down with dental leaders who share their stories about dentistry, business, and growth. Welcome back to the Dental Economist Show with me, Mike Huffaker. Today, we're thrilled to have Dr. Brian Harris join us. Dr. Brian Harris is a leading cosmetic dentist and the visionary behind Smile Virtual, a platform that revolutionizes how dental consultations are delivered through video technology. Known as the virtual dentist, Brian combines his expertise in cosmetic dentistry with innovative teledentistry solutions to enhance patient confidence and transform smiles across the globe. He's not only reshaping our smiles, but also the way dental professionals connect with and treat their patients today. Welcome to the show, Dr. Harris. How are you today? I'm doing good. Thanks, Mike. Been looking forward to having this conversation. You and I have been talking back and forth for a bit. We just realized this morning when we got on the call that we're both here local in Phoenix. I would love to hear a little bit about your professional journey. What brought you to this point? How you got into dentistry and cosmetic dentistry and why it's such a passion of yours? I grew up around dentistry. My dad was a dentist and he's retired now. But, you know, in the mid 90s, I saw him go through this transformation himself with his own practice where he started doing cosmetic dentistry, went on to teach for a number of years with different organizations. And I think that was like, really for me when I was like, this is cool, you can actually really change lives. And so decided to go down that path. It had such an impact on my family. My older brother became a dentist. Then I became a dentist. My younger brother did. My youngest brother owns a dental lab. So that was like my dad's pivot point ended up being like a real important part of all of our journey. And so I joined him in 2005 after finishing dental school at University of Pacific. And I've been practicing ever since. Great family practice with a focus on cosmetic dentistry here in Phoenix. And probably 2016 was when everything changed for me. And that kind of led me to where I am today. We had grown Harris Dental from one location to five. And I was honestly, I was just burned out. It seemed from the outside looking in, everything was great and we had it all figured out, but I just found myself just overworked doing a ton of dentistry and running successful practices, but not really doing the stuff that, that I love to do. And that's really when, when I discovered this new way of connecting with patients and then everything just changed from there. Yeah. So I want to dive into that a little bit more, but before we get there, I'm just curious because I've spoken to a lot of people in the dental space and the story is oftentimes similar that there's a father or it's a family and there just becomes this kind of appeal to dentistry. I'm just curious from your perspective, do you have children? I do. I've got four kids. Four kids. And when you look at the fact that your family, your siblings all went into this industry and then you, you think about your children, and where they're going to go in the future, do you anticipate that there will also be this interest in dental and why is it that so many folks in our industry have like family connections? And I guess as an aside, is there an opportunity to help those that don't have family connections gain an appreciation of what a fantastic industry it is to hopefully attract more dentists and inspire more to go to dental school in the future? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great observation. We see it a lot. And I, I think what happens is it is a great profession. It's great because you have freedom of your schedule. You have freedom of financial freedom a lot of times if you're doing things right. And I think sometimes it's just a path of least resistance for a lot of people where it's like, hey, this is what dad did. And then it would be a path that I want to go down. So as long as those that are practicing enjoy it and your kids see that you enjoy it, I think naturally they're going to want to follow in your footsteps. 
And I think what I've seen is I've helped mentor and coach a lot of younger dentists that wanted to get into dentistry, that their parents weren't dentists, but they got to know me because I was there or, or my kids were friends of theirs or I helped mentor them growing up in whether it was sports or church organizations. They got to know me through that and saw that what I did and, and now wanted to follow in that same path. So I think it's just being a good example to those around you and letting people know that, that you love what you do. But I think first up, you got to love what you do. Yeah, it's an important first step. So let's talk a little bit about, you mentioned that at some point there was some burnout that had looked like from the outside, everything was just fantastic. And you did this pivot and you started to pursue more of a path in technology and you're credited with transforming the traditional dental consultation process by focusing more on the buyer's journey and, and starting to integrate video technology. So share a little bit about what that pivot looked like, how you ultimately decided this was what you were going to pursue. I'm, I'm sure there was lots of thoughts and mulling over whether or not is this a risk that I'm taking that's worth pursuing? Is this the right thing? Or maybe it just immediately settled in you where you were like, had such conviction that you knew that you were following the path that you were meant to. But can you walk us through that a little bit and then describe in some more detail exactly what the virtual dentist is, is all about? I think there, there was a real push at that time, in, like in 2016, for the super GP, which is become a dentist that's trained in everything and then just offer those, all of those procedures within your practice. It's like being an inch deep and a mile wide, like a little bit good at everything. But I think the problem with that is when you're a little bit good at everything, like it's really hard to know how to manage complications. It's really hard to love what you do because you're all over the place. And so I, I went to this business mastermind event outside of dentistry and the guys in the group really challenged me to stop trying to be a little bit good at everything and just be like an inch wide and a mile deep. Find the one thing you really love and just go all in on that. And so th that was where the mind shift like started for me. And I thought, man, if I could just do one thing every day, it would be cosmetic dentistry. And I was telling my wife about this experience and she's like, well, why don't you just do cosmetic dentistry? And tried to explain to her like, it's like in any business, you can't only do the stuff you love. It's, that's not how things work. You do the stuff you love, but then you got to do all the other stuff too, because it's just part of, it's just part of business. And she challenged me. She's like, no, you know, the problem is that everybody knows your dentist. Nobody knows what you do. And you need to start posting your work on social media. You need to start talking more about the smile transformations. I think it would make a big difference. So I did. I started using social media as a platform to show the world what I do and followed a simple format of, hey, here's one third of my content was like, hey, here's who I am personally. Here's my family. Or here's my hobbies. One third was reposting like patient testimonials, showcasing my patients. And then the other third was, showing my smile designs. And like within two weeks, like it didn't happen overnight, but within two weeks, like somebody reached out and her name was Kendall, the first virtual consult I ever recorded. She reached out and was like, hey, I'm 22. I'm super self-conscious of my smile. I'm at a time in my life where I should be like happier, but I don't go out. I've been to four different dentists. I've had all these consults and uh, I just need your help. And so... That was a, a pivotal moment for me because in the past, what I would have said was, here's the office number, call, and I'd love to see you in person. I always wanted them to come to me so that I could be in front of them and build a relationship before we started talking about the cost. And I recognized that through social, the trust is already there. And if I could just somehow record a video of myself sharing this information with her, there was no barriers. There was no like trying to get on a Zoom call with her or trying to get her into the office. So I sat down, recorded my first video. And in the video, I was just like, Kendall, I can help you. There's a few different ways we can do this. Option one is this. Option two is this. Three is this. This is what it costs. And here's examples. I showed photos of different cases. And then I just told her, I said, Wait, when you're ready, I'd love to meet you in person. And I went over fees, everything in the video and sent it to her. And then two weeks later, she was in my practice. We started treatment right away. Totally changed her smile, changed her life. And she posted about it and tagged me. And then other people started reaching out. 
it was like this light bulb moment where I'm like, man, okay, all I have to do is create the funnel. And then as the leads come through, I'll take time, record a video, giving them advice and send it to them. And then they'll come in and see me and they'll already be ready to move forward with treatment. And I went from doing one small case like every week or every two weeks to doing three a day. So that's what I do now. Three small designs every single day. It's all I do. I don't do any general dentistry. We're booked out months in advance. And, and I've got, I think, 450 doctors now using the same methodology, create a whole software platform around it. And it's just been absolutely fascinating to see an exchange. That's fantastic. There is so much in that story that can be unpacked. I love the, the fact that you were open to go to a mastermind class that was maybe separate and apart from your industry and dental and learn from others and experience some different perspective. That ability to get clarity of vision, which in this case really became clarity of focus, is something that is so hard, I think, for so many of us to do, right? Like that whole like mile wide, one inch deep thing. You feel like you have to do everything. And then to have a supportive partner where you're like, hey, I can't just do this. And she's like, what do you mean? Of course you can't. Well, like, why not? Why can't you do that? I think is great. The whole process here, in some ways, I'm not deeply familiar with it, but my initial kind of reaction is that it's almost counterintuitive to the way that people are likely taught to go about doing things. In many ways, like first you're establishing credibility through your social media presence so that there's already a notion that this is somebody that I can trust and this is somebody that knows what they're doing. So you're providing social proof ahead of any other interaction before you even know who they are, they know who you are. And then the process of allowing somebody to present their case in a sense or show you what they want to have done and have you provide them guidance without really an expectation or a high pressure situation where they're able to just walk away at that point and digest. I think that kind of flies in the face of conventional wisdom, which would tell you, no, you want this person in front of you. You want the opportunity to gain the commitment right at that moment. You don't want them to be able to walk away. You don't want them to go get second opinions or go check with other people. So what gave you the confidence that this method which really is a consumer-centric method, in my opinion, it would work in this industry. And did you have doubts that it would, where you might just end up doing a lot of work, providing guidance, providing advice, and then not actually receiving the benefit of gaining that business on the other end? I love how you explain that. And it excites me to hear you explain it back in different words, because I can tell like it's clicked for you. It's unlocked something where you're like, oh yeah, it makes sense. And I think that's what's been so fun for me is to to help unlock that for other people. I don't know why. There are, especially on social media right now, the amount of content out there that teaches like sales tactics and pressure and like handling objections and like all this. To me, like when you really step back and look at it, that's not how people buy. Like people buy on emotion and justify with logic. People buy because they want to, not because they're forced to or not because they're scared into it especially when it comes to five, 10, 20, $50,000 things. And so what's so great about it, it is the buyer's process. Like you're taking everything. There's millions of people out there right now that want to know if I can improve my smile, what are my options? Who do I trust to do it? What does it cost? And when you can just sit down and make it really easy for them, like, hey, upload a photo, send it to me when I have time. I'll record a video for you. I'll give you all of that. I'm going to give you my gift of time and expertise because like I'm passionate about changing lives. And if it's something that resonates with you, great, I'd love to work with you. And if not, at least now you are better educated and you can make a decision. And what's fascinating is like the amount of trust and confidence that's built in doing that is everything. So a couple of stats. So if I send out 10 virtual consults, five of those I'll never hear anything from for a while. Five of those will respond back. And of those that come in and actually meet with me in person, I think we're like in an 89% close rate on high dollar stuff. So $15,000 to $50,000 cases. So what's happened now is I only will spend face-to-face -face time with people once they've had a virtual consult, they already know my fees. And so every consult I spend, people are moving forward. But there's still those other five people out there that never responded back to me, that know who I am, that know what I do, 
that feel like I serve them because I did it for free. And, and I'm confident when they are ready, if they end up doing something, they'll move forward. And if they don't, at least it's five more people out there that know of me and what I do will refer their friends and family to see me. That's really interesting. So you end up getting to spend the majority of your time with very highly qualified potential patients that are very serious. And they now have the information that they need because you've spent the time to provide it to them. By the time you have them sitting face to face, the the percentage of conversions that turn into patients at that point, I would imagine that's much higher than it would have been if you had skipped this initial step and you were just requiring everybody to come in the office. Actually, do you have any sense of what that would look like prior to implementing this type of process and doing the video consult? If you were just with that first patient that had reached out and she was like, hey, I need help and I'm not confident. And, and if you would have said at that moment, instead of send me a picture, if you would have said, hey, come in and see me. And if you had been doing that, what would the difference look like from a conversion perspective at that point? Yeah, national averages are 30 to 50% case acceptance on high dollar treatment. And part of the reason is that if you look at how it's done, it's a broken process, right? People come in, but let's say they actually do come in and they're in the chair. They've never met us. We have no idea who they are. They have no idea the kind of work that we do. There's a process where like you're coming from zero on both sides and then you're presenting real expensive treatment. We forget how expensive like the treatment is that we actually do. And most of the time we're doing that without the spouse present without the parents present, without a co-financial decision maker present. So now we put on them to go home and try to explain that to their spouse. So the difference now is you get a chance to get in front of them, share what's possible. They can share it with their spouse, their parents, their grandparents, or anybody else in their life that they may have the funds to, to be able to support it. And it's just the efficiency alone has changed everything and how I practice it. And it's not just me. Initially, when I first, so what I did is I took the idea and I said, okay, what if, like, if this works for me, or if I can teach this methodology to others? And, and so I brought on about 25 doctors, people that I've known over the years from the lecture circuit and people in the cosmetic space that I've known. And then I saw how it worked for them where they were, like small town in Kansas versus Beverly Hills versus the Northwest. And when I saw that the same principles were working, everywhere, then created a whole software platform around it. And to see other doctors come in, just learning about cosmetic dentistry, and within two or three years being like the one to see in their town for cosmetics, it's crazy. And it's all because they make it really easy for people to do business with them. And they break down all those barriers that so often we put up for people. I love seeing disruption and buy-in processes. Example, in, the, in another industry, in the car industry, is we own a Tesla now. So that's the end of the story that, that kind of will answer the question if we ended up buying. But when we were first looking at different cars, we had identified three or four for my wife that we, we were uh, interested in. And with the Tesla, it was like, hey, you can you, you go online, you schedule this appointment to go to a test drive. It's like a very specific time. And I was like, okay, well, I think you can do that with any car dealership and they're going to have somebody there and they're going to do the test drive. The difference was we get to the, the Tesla dealership they bring the car out. They're like, yeah, you've got 30 minutes. Just do whatever you want. Bring it back when you're done. There's no salesman jumping in the car with us. It's just us. I was like, well, this is, this is refreshing. We can just sit here and go wherever and chat about it without feeling like we're talking in front of this person sitting behind us that's yapping away the entire time at all these features that we actually don't care about. But we do the drive. We get back. And I was like, all right, well, here it comes. And they're like, did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was great. Okay, if you're interested, just buy it in the app. Have a great day. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. What is this? This is very unusual. And sure enough, we ended up buying it in the app, 45 minutes. And now we own this car. We pick it up the next day. And I said, I've never had a process like this before. And it is incredible. And just a few weeks ago, we're thinking about buying another car and not a Tesla. My wife said, do you want to go test drive? And I was like, no, just the even thought of that right now is exhausting. Like I, I, I can't manage. I wish everything was like this now, because now that I've experienced it, it's really hard to go back. So kudos to you for developing this process and then making it where democratizing it, building a software platform where others can use it. So tell me more about this platform. How can people take advantage of it? How does it work? What does it look like? Where do people go to find out more information about it? Share a little bit about uh, what you've built. Yeah. So if you can find more information, just on smilevirtual.com, 
But the platform essentially, if you can envision, it's essentially a funnel that doctors get when they sign up and it's their own kind of landing page. It's their own link that you put on your website, you put on Facebook, on Instagram, LinkedIn, wherever you are. And the call to action is is simple. Instead of call the office and then go through like the old sales process and trying to find a time, it's upload a photo, tell us what you want to change. And then we'll get back to you with recommendations and a cost and it's free. And, and we'll do it when we have time. You watch it when you have time. So what you do is you put, like you create that funnel because all you really care about, all I really care about at the end of the day is who is out there that is self-conscious or smile that wants to do something and doesn't have a dentist they trust. And so when you put it out there, you make it easy and you gather these people. Now I see people who come into the platform and I get a photo of what they look like. I get a close-up of their smile. I know their name. I know their email. I know their phone number. I know their emotional pain point of why they want to change their smile. So like I have, it's a, it's every marketer's dream. You have now within the platform, all that information. And now you as a dentist, you get to sit down when you have time and you get to just give them your best self. So the platform design, it comes preloaded with before and after cases that, that I allow doctors to use as they're educating patients on what's possible. And so the doctor would look at it and be like, okay, she's got spacing, maybe worn down teeth. So I'm going to choose this case and this one. Great. And it pre-populates like a presentation. Then when you're ready, first you type in recommendations, cost, and then you just hit record and it counts down. And then it's you on the screen in video down in the bottom right in the corner. And what they see is this presentation screen that as you're going, you scroll and they see you scrolling through a presentation. And the concept is really simple. We teach within the platform that it's not about treatment planning. It's not about case acceptance. It's not about being a dentist. It's you hitting record and then just saying, hey, like I did for Kendall, hey, I can help you. And before I go into kind of my recommendations, let me tell you a little bit more about me and what we do. So it gives you this ability now to brag about yourself or showcase what you do because you're not selling anything. You're educating. But say, let me tell you, more about us and the practice and what we do. And let's take a minute. This is who we are. These are the kind of patients we treat. This is our specialty. Now, when it comes to your smile, here's what I see. Here's what I'm going to recommend. Here's what the process looks like. This is a number of visits. And from a cost standpoint, it's going to be roughly this much if you want to do this. Here's Katie's case. Here's Jenny's case. Here's Jessica's. They're all just like you. Here's what we do for them. And this is a big deal. So take the time you need. You're ready. We'll be here. Just let us know. You'll see under this video, there's a button that will allow you to connect with my team. Also a button if you want to apply for financing, you can do that. And otherwise, have an amazing day and I look forward to meeting you soon. That's it. So then you stop it, it gets sent out and what they get is a video of you at your best and there's no pressure. It leaves them wanting more. And the goal isn't necessarily to close them in the video. The goal is like, next steps, come in and meet with us in person. We'd love to to go over things in more detail so we can check everything out and give you a final plan. That's the journey. But then there's a whole back-end patient communication platform, automated follow-up, text messages, a lot of different things you can do with the platform. But it's really, it's like the ultimate sales funnel. And then you get to control their journey because you get to record a video. And if you mess up, great, just stop it. Go back and re-record. And so they always get you at your best. Help me understand real quick. Is it if I am contemplating some cosmetic dentistry, do I go to Smile Virtual or do I go to Dr. Brian Harris's site? And then on Dr. Brian's site, I see the opportunity. So does it create a funnel, like a nationwide funnel that is then allocated across different providers that are for leveraging this technology? Or is it a one-to-one sort of funnel that is created when you attract patients to your own website at your practice? So it's both. If you go to smilevirtual.com, like you'll see there's a directory of dentists. There's like selected dentists. You can submit your virtual console. Um, There's also patients that don't have a dentist that will submit a virtual console. And then we just distribute that to whoever's closest to them. But so there's that piece, the like the direct-to-consumer facing piece. But then there's also the dentist piece. So if you go to drbrianharris.com, you'll see a button that says get started. You click on that and you'll see it pulls up 
it's a smile virtual landing page where they upload their photo. The doctors have that link to put on all their own pages. It's their own landing page. But then there's also the patient facing smile virtual side. And within the platform on smilevirtual.com, you can see where it says I'm a dentist, I'm a patient. If you click on I'm a dentist, it'll take you more to an educational landing page telling you more about the software, you know, what it costs, like how it works, all that. So it's both uh, consumer facing and dentist facing. Got it. That's fantastic. Odd question for you. So we have a, a kind of a marketing automation platform in, in our suite of software products that we offer. And we're a, a SaaS software company at Planet DDS. And so in our world, we talk about leads. And it's always, hey, when you have leads, you build pipeline, you get pipeline coverage, you get an understanding of what your ultimate output bookings and revenue will look like. It always felt to me maybe a little bit crass to talk in the dental industry about leads. So when I talk to folks that are potentially going to use any of our platforms, I say, this is where you find your future patients versus using the term leads. And just curious from your perspective, when you think about building a funnel of potential patients, what terminology do you use? This is just as an aside, but I'm just curious if there's any specific viewpoint that you have on how on the language that you would use to describe the funnel that you're building. Yeah, first, let me differentiate too between what you guys have created and like the back end on, on Small Virtual. What we have for follow-up is pretty minimal. It's the minor stuff. Like we have a ton of our doctors that are using more of a platform like yours. It's really robust. It's really meant to like, like it's a marketing machine, right? So they use Small Virtual on the front end and then they have like their own automated platform. And it's interesting. I think when I have like my tech founder hat on, I think leads is just, it's just the most most common word that, that we use. From a patient standpoint, I see it more, it's not necessarily a lead. I see it more along the lines of, hey, here's somebody in my inbox that's like self-conscious of their smile. Like here's somebody that is wanting to change their life. So yes, it's a lead but different because as I see one come through, I'm not like, oh, okay, how I'm going to sell them. It's more like, awesome. Here's somebody I'm going to, I'm going to go and impact their life in a massive way. And they may or may not move forward. Either way, I know I'm helping them. And I, I think that's the biggest differentiation is, is that it's, I just see it differently. No, I agree. I just think, I think it feels crass to call a patient a lead to some extent. So that's why I, I'd switch to the, we'll just talk in terms of future patients. That's a great way to look at it. It's a future patient. This is somebody that I know because of how I'm going to treat them and I'm going to build trust and I'm going to, I'm going to help them and I'm going to do it without charging them. I know it's going to be a future patient. When they're ready, they'll come in and see me. I actually love that. It feels more genuine and authentic and more in line with the care that's supposed to be provided. I have another kind of off question for you. And this is one that maybe after five years in dental, I should know the answer to. But when you are a future patient or somebody that is unhappy with their smile, how do you determine whether you need orthodontic care or cosmetic dentistry or both? So the great thing about Smile Virtual is that it's really helpful for any patient that where there's confusion around a process. And so you take like clear liner therapy with Invisalign, for example, small makeovers, porcelain veneers, but then there's also like composite veneers. And then there's also all on board procedure. So anytime there's a lot of confusion around something and it's higher price, it works great for that. The way I explain it to my patients from like a patient perspective is I will always, in my console, always tell my patients like, listen, let's say somebody sends their smile in and I can see that the teeth are crooked, a little bit out of position, but generally I'm like, it's good teeth. It's a pretty pretty good smile, I'll just let them know there's two paths that we can go down. If you love the shape, generally happy with the color, if it's mostly just position and the look of the smile, you're probably the best candidate for Invisalign or orthodontics because like, we can straighten the teeth, get them in the right position. We can even reshape the teeth, make them look different and whiten them and you're going to be great. But if you want drastic change to the color, if you want a new shape, if you want a drastic change to the position or a new bite, then that's where we go down the path of porcelain veneer. So for the purpose of this console, I feel like you're going to be a better candidate for porcelain based on what you said. But just know if you're done watching this and realize you're actually pretty happy with what you have, 
then Invisalign is going to be your best option. The way that I approach it is I try to help them distinguish right away because what happens a lot of times is people will go down the path of straightening their teeth and it wasn't ever really an issue of straightening. They hate the color and the shape and they want like a totally new smile. And so they go down the wrong path. Now, you had mentioned uh, earlier in the conversation the notion of a super GP and I've heard, I think probably interchangeable terms like a super producer where you can just you do all the treatments and the, the breadth is really wide. What are you seeing in the market as it relates to dental service organizations and how they are engaging or leveraging cosmetic dentistry within their organizations? And are you working with any in particular with Smile Virtual? We work with some of the top DSOs out there. And I think it's important to distinguish, like there's some areas, like I've got friends in small towns they are very far away from other big cities where you have to be a super GP. You got to have to know how to take that tooth out because the other option is for them to drive two and a half hours to get it done. And so there are times where that is appropriate. But what I found with whether we call it a DSO or a group practice or just any practices in general that have more of a focus on just like profitability of the business and running things efficiently could be a DSO or it could just be a single doctor practice that's just really dialed in on those things. They recognize small virtual for what it is, which is, but it's not a lead generating or it's not a new patient generating platform. It's a communication tool. And so when they recognize that and they see this tool, when people go through this process, case acceptance goes through the roof because there's trust, they're better prepared. They can talk with their spouse before they come in. So the, I think the DSOs especially see it and they're like, oh, wow. Yeah, this is going to increase case acceptance because people are coming in way more prepared and it builds trust. And they like it for that reason because they see how efficient it is. We'll wrap up here in a second. I want to be conscious of your time. I'm curious from your perspective, you were in the technology realm, you're in dentistry, you've been in the space for a long time. Obviously, there's lots of changes. There's a lot of innovation that is taking place right now in the industry. What are some of the things from your perspective that you're most excited about? You kind of look forward and you're like, there's a bright future for dentistry. Here are some of the things that lead me to believe that. Can you share anything that, that you've seen as of late? I think there's some great things with AI that are coming to the forefront that are going to make it easier for doctors to talk to their patients about true needs and really take this feeling like we're having to sell things out of the equation. It's going to be a little bit more black and white. So I think that's going to be interesting. We're seeing the same thing with some things that we're piloting right now, small virtual for small simulations and AI. So I think there's going to be some great things there. I think the biggest thing though is when talking about elective dental procedures is just the norm. It, it opens up the ability now for everyone within our profession to do more of those types of procedures. When more and more people are having porcelain veneers done, just for an example, you can look at that as the market saturated, then I, it's not something I'd want to start in now because I'll never be able to keep up with these other guys. The reality is you have to recognize that the more cosmetic dentistry is done, the more that's going to have to be redone down the road. At some point, it's going to need to be redone and the more that it's done, the more awareness there is around it. And so it's almost the opposite. Like the trends are showing like things are really starting to take off. It's kind of like when Clear Choice first came into Arizona to do all on fours and everyone started freaking out. How are they going to do that? They're going to take away from... No, it was like, it was the thing that's allowed all these dentists to now be able to do all these surgeries in their practice because they created an awareness around a certain procedure. And I think the same thing's happening right now with cosmetic dentistry. One of those, the rising tide lifts all boats sort of scenarios. Success is not a zero-sum game. There's a one person's ability to build a great practice and become successful does not take away the ability of somebody else to do the same. So it's really just changing that, that mindset, I think. But that's a great call out. I really appreciate you, you taking the time here today. I, I want to be conscious of your time. I know that you've got a a busy schedule coming up, but where can people find you? What socials do you have? Websites? Kind of share share all of the information. The easiest place probably like on Instagram is just at Dr. Brian Harris, drbrianharris.com. 
is my website where you can go and find out more information about me specifically. And then Smile Virtual, for those that are interested in becoming like a virtual dentist and doing virtual consults in their practice, it's a great place to find out more information there. But when a mutual friend of ours put us together, I think they introduced me to you in a way they're like, you guys have to talk because you see the world the exact same way and you're both in dental and you know it's like your parallel lives. And then to find out that we practice like not even a mile from where you work and just the conversation we've had today is like, it's fascinating because I understand now I have a really a better understanding of really what it is that you guys are creating. And to come back on, I think we could talk for hours and let's pick some other topics that you feel would be a value and let's come on and let's just provide massive value for your listeners. I think this has been great. We'll do the next one in person. We uh, can have you come in the office. We'll sit across the table and we'll chat. So no, this was great. Really appreciate it. Lots of great information in there. I think what you guys are doing is really intriguing and provides a great benefit to the consumer and the patient. And if there's one thing that in the, the short time that I've been in dental thus far that I feel is sometimes forgotten about, and I think this is changing. So I, I give the, the industry a lot of credit. It is to catch up to the rest of consumer expectations and how we, through our daily lives, get to engage with all the other companies and businesses that we engage with and how it's so different typically in this industry. And, and you're doing really great work to change that. Thanks again for coming on. Really appreciate it. It was great to meet you and we'll have to do it again sometime. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. The Dental Economist Show is brought to you by Planet DDS, home of Dental OS. To find out more about how cloud-based dental software by Planet DDS helps unleash dentists and their staff to focus on patient care, visit www.planetdds.com. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes by following wherever you listen to podcasts. And thank you for listening.